Truth five, it's 12 o'clock. Can I have 10 more minutes? Can I have 10? Okay. I tell you, that exercise we did messed us up on time, but it was good. It was good. I want to connect the dots. What dots? I want to connect the dots between business, whether, whether you're signing, signing fronts of checks or backs of checks, purpose, doing something that matters, success. We want to succeed. You don't want to lose, right? <laughs> you want what you're doing to work out. And faith. Okay? And we can make it, you know, it doesn't have to be spiritual faith. I'm not going to dump that on everybody, but mine is spiritual faith. But I just want to talk about faith in general. Something I found out through all the years is most people feel as though they were made to do something greater than what they're doing. And I've always said, you know, 90% of people believe that there's probably a higher power or something. They, they might argue what that is and God will, you know, but most of the people, even atheists, you know, I, I have found that when you're, there's no atheist in the foxhole, when you're in trouble, <laughs> you know, people are open. Um, but is it possible if there's a God, if, and he designed you, and he had a plan and purpose for your life. Okay, let's just, we don't have to agree with it, but let's just say it was a possibility. One, would you want to know what it is? You could, say, you could find out what it is and say, no, I'm not interested. I've done that. Okay? But if his plan and purpose was right around the dreams of your life, and these desires that you have in you were from him, you'd want to know. Okay? That's one. Most people say yes to that. In fact, in 20 years, I've never had somebody that said no. Now, I'm dealing with stuck people. If, you know, let me just tell you, if, I was, if you're hungry and I had a sandwich and, and uh, I said, hey, if you're really hungry, you're probably going to eat my sandwich. But if I took my sandwich over to Beverly Hills and they're not hungry, I'm going to get arrested. <laughs> so there's something about being hungry because you're open to change your thinking. Okay. The second thing, if God was offering help, would you take it? If you're stuck and God's offering help, would you take it? If your dream is to have a business and God was like, well, duh, that's why I created it. Why do you think I gave you these skills? Is it because you're going to go be a preacher out there? No. One of the, thi one of the things I've learned is being in business gives me a platform. If I was living in a trailer park or if under the bridge, over the, no one would want to listen to it, you know, anything I have to, but it's, it's really because I've had some success and I'm willing to share it. So it's connecting the dots between business purpose, success, and faith. Now, when you go from dream to destiny, destiny is your five-year thing. And, you know, we can do three years and 20 years and 10 years and all that. These are six predictable stages that you're going to go through. Everybody goes through them. No one's exempt from them. Seasoned entrepreneurs know that we all go through them. We don't like it, but what happens is we go, there's a process that we go through. So you have a dream. You wrote it down today. It's a dream. If, uh, if you don't create a plan and make a decision to go after it, it's a fantasy, and it'll never happen. And most people live in fantasy land because they're not willing to step forward they're bound by these invisible fences that they've allowed to be erected, and though their eagles are living like a chicken in a chicken coop, because they won't change their thinking. And they're trying to get from here to over here, and they don't understand that's not how it works. You have to decide what you want, and then connect the dots backward. Every company I've built, every house we've ever lived in, my wife came this way, our kids came with, everything we've ever done was about understanding what we want and going after it. And what was the amazing thing with God is he helped us do it. So I'm no dummy. If somebody's offering help, I'm going to take it. Okay. You have a dream, you make a decision. You say, I'm going after it. The next predictable stage is you have delays. Nothing happens on your time frame. Hello, welcome to, you know. <laughs> then you run into difficulty because it's harder than you thought. This little LinkedIn thing that I talked about to put up there seven points, it's really hard. And when you're doing it, you're going to feel like it's not working. That's what the, to hear was complaining. I'm like, what are you? You're like almost homeless. What are you complaining? You got nothing else to do. 
you know, he's, we joke, you know, he's, he's turned out to be one of my best friends. I mean, the guy's riding buses all over Los Angeles looking for, I mean, it's crazy, you know. You hit delays and difficulties, then you have dead ends. You hit these places where unless you have a miracle, you're screwed. <laughs> and everybody who's ever done anything good hits these moments. Well, as a believer, if I'm going to pray for a miracle, I can't be surprised that I'd be, get put in a position where I'd need one. I recognize these stages. Three of these, delay, difficulty, and dead end, feel and look like total failure. When I'm in these stages, people look at, and they don't think you're too smart, because they're, you know. But this is my sixth one, and I've probably turned around 20 plus companies, I guess, something like that. And in all of them, we do strategies that we go into these things. I mean, when we go into, it's easy to see the problems. It's really hard to figure out the solutions because you got their people, you got their cash flow, you got other debt, you got all these different conditions. With you, we have all your personal different things that are in there. We have your way of thinking right now. And the question is, are you a learner? What's your rate of learning? What does that look like? I have met all kinds of people that someplace in here turned around and went back because it was hard. It's hard, but if you knew that right after dead end was destiny, you wouldn't quit. You wouldn't look at your circumstances. To me, my circumstances don't mean anything. They have nothing to do with where I'm going. They're just circumstances. I'm like a pilot who has an instrument rating, and I can go into a storm, and I don't let my feelings tell me anything. Because when you have an instrument rating and you're a pilot and you go through a storm, you look at your instruments. You don't rely on your feelings. If you rely on your feelings, you'll kill yourself because you'll crash. Because your feelings are telling you all, they're sensors, they're and their feelings are overrated. One day they're up, one day they're down. Not to say that we shouldn't feel, but they're very inaccurate, you know, and in every company I've ever built, we have to figure out our formula. A lot of times it doesn't work and there's, you know, my first company, that's what I learned. After a year of failing, and in my first company, I'm driving a truck at nighttime, no one knew it. So during the daytime, I'm running a staffing company. At nighttime, I'm driving a diesel truck around LA and Orange County delivering stuff. And I was just like, God, why did you put me? I went after my dream. Why am I here? The thing's not working. And I was hoping that he would come rescue me with, you know, clients and all these different things. And what I realized in that failure was an innovation. It was something I could have done from day one, I just didn't have the know-how. And once I launched that new idea, immediately, it took me to a place that I could have never been if everything I had planned was working. And what I've realized and doing this with my own companies and helping people with their careers, is innovation comes out of this. There might be something that you're doing and you're looking for a certain kind of position, but if we, through ideation, switched it around and, and we stopped looking at this and looked it over here and it becomes your dream job or your dream company. This dream to destiny, understanding these six stages, these six Ds that you go through, and knowing that, you, knowing that you have to go, it's good. It doesn't feel good, but it's good. But if you knew it, you'd keep going. This guy is what stops us. In the, I had a pastor teach me this one time. He says, you know, fear is an acronym for somebody, we got some church people in here. What's, what's it an acronym for? False evidence appearing real. 
There's false evidence, circumstances, and they appear real. Here's what happens. You got a big goal, you got a big dream. You want to, you, you're, you know, you're all excited at the beginning, then you start the journey, and you know, you have delays and difficulties and dead ends. And these little thoughts come into your head. And what do these thoughts tell you? Do these little thoughts, doubt thoughts, what do they, do they say, keep going, you're almost there? What does a doubt thought tell you? <laughs> it means stop and turn around. You can't do it. You can't do it. Are, are, are you crazy? Look at what, ha you know, okay. What I've learned is that doubt thought, and I don't know where it's coming from, but it ain't my thought. It's not God's thought. But it's contrary to winning. <laughs> and if I was on a football team and somebody got in the huddle and they started saying, I don't know, Antonio, what if you drop the ball? What if you don't make it? You know, maybe we shouldn't throw the ball because we might, well, what if we do this? It, you'd say, get out of here. We don't want you on our team. We don't want you on a... The minute that thought comes in my head, you got to learn how to get rid of it. Because if I don't get rid of that little innocent thought that just says, well, you know, we got to just, you know, have a plan B, B, you know. Uh, that thought, let me tell you what happens with that thought. It turns into fear for me. And when I have a fear in my life, it's like making a movie. You're, you're in the movie business, right, or entertain. I make a horror flick about my life, about what's going to happen. It's like the downfall of Gerald Duran, and it takes me, I'm the producer, I'm the director, I'm the, the star, I'm going to get an Academy Award for this performance. It takes me about five seconds to come up with the downfall of Gerald Duran. This is fear. And then it's like a little kid when the Exorcist movie came out. Remember that? This puts me at, 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 you know, in my age group. That was scary. And my mama says, don't you watch that Exorcist movie. You're going to get demon possessed. Well, guess what me and my cousins did? Since she was looking, <laughs> we were watching that thing. And we, let me tell you this, man. We couldn't sleep for three months after that. <laughs> I mean, you know, we were, you know, <laughs> and that, you know, that was nothing back then. Now, you know, there are a lot of worry. Worry is watching that dumb movie over and over and over and over and over. And you know what happens when you watch that movie over and over? You're going to have some messy pants. That's a nice way of saying it. And what happens is when you're worried, then you get discouraged. And in that word discourage is courage. You see that in there? This word courage? You lose that. And when you're discouraged, you get depressed. It may not be a clinical, it could be a clinical, but when you're stuck, you know what I'm talking about? Am I the only one that's ever been a little depressed when you get stuck? Okay, and you get numb, and you lose focus, and you don't even know what to do. You're just kind of frozen. You know, you might only have three things to do. You can't even remember, you can't decide which order to do them in. I mean, you're just stuck. You're running on empty. Then you go right into failure. Here's the flip side, and we're done here. Here's the flip side. You gotta have faith in something. You better have faith in God, have faith in something. What something? Faith is seeing where you want to go and taking ownership of it right now, regardless of what your situation looks like. I've never had a time in my life when I don't have dreams of where I want to go. And one of the things I've learned how to do is say that I'm going after it. I'm going to have that dream, and I don't care what I'm going through. I don't care what it looks like. Now, for me, I have spiritual faith to have that, because if not, my feelings would beat me. <laughs> so that's why I have spiritual faith. And when I have faith, have you ever seen a pro, you know, a pro golfer? They see that ball go in before they even hit it. Same thing with NBA, all sports. Pros already see the result before they make the shot. Pros in business, I've walked through buildings and sat in my office and I've walked around in homes before I ever owned them. And I did it in my head. Now, not in some weird way. 
I have a dream. It's important. If I go around to all your five-year things and we were to really spend some time talking about it, you're like, I want it. It's important to me. Are you willing to control the way you're, you're feeling to get it? Yes. But, but maybe you have to change your thinking to do it. Because your thinking says, well, a little fear is not bad. Let me tell you, faith, fear, fear tolerated is faith contaminated. It's really true. And it doesn't matter if we're talking spiritual faith or not spiritual faith. This is why we don't let this fear thing come into our meetings when we have important business to do, because it kills ideas. And I always say, you know, I was preaching in church a couple weeks ago, and I used my people, gave me some raised eyebrows, but I said, what if I took a glass, the, one of the pastors was there with me, and I said, what if I took your water, and I went outside, and I got a little tiny piece, this is a tiny piece of dog poop, just a tiny piece, not much, you wouldn't even barely see it, but I put it in your little water, and I shook it up. Would you drink it? He's like, heck no. And there are people like, oh, he's talking about poop in church. Um, <laughs> you know, he's the poop preacher. And no, you wouldn't. See, this is the contamination that we do in our heads. Because the battle's up in your head. Most of the thing we worry about never even happen. We spend all this energy fearing. Well, when you have faith, you believe. You can see the destiny. You can see the success. And you have expectation that it's going to work out. That's how I, now it's a battle, but I've learned how to have victory having that. And as a result, I have perfect peace. What would you pay to have, if it was a little pill you could take, to have perfect peace, no matter what you're going through? I'm not saying lack of trouble. I'm saying zero stress. You'd love to have it, right? See, you can change your thinking and learn how. When my son died, all of a sudden, and he died very unexpected. It was he got sick, and a few days later, he's dead. And I'm looking at him. He's ten years old. He's laying. They're trying. They're working on him for an hour to try to revive him, and he's got fluids coming out of there. You know, it's just a mess. But what I realized was, and this is what my God was telling me, he's more alive today because he's up with me. And he changed my perception. No, there was still pain, but he graduated. It was, it was a different view, a different perception. And no matter, that's a very dramatic thing, but no matter what we've gone through, it, there's something about a perception that if it could change, if I could change my thinking and my doing, I can change my results. That motivated me. The thing I felt God telling me in my heart, you do your job and you do your purpose which is being here with you guys today. And when you're, and then when you're done, you, you'll be up here with your son. I believe that. And I have a lot of stories like this. But peace, to have peace. It's amazing to have peace when things aren't going good. Amazing. When you have peace and zero stress, you get your desire back. You might be without a client for, you know, or looking for a job or your money's running out or whatever. But you still have desire to get up and you're excited because you have peace. And when you have desire, you have perseverance. It means you might be running on empty, but you've, and at the end of the, your rope, but you've tied a knot and you're hanging on. You're at the dead end, but you know when you're at a dead end, that's when miracles happen and success is happening next. This is a little something that somebody taught me a long time ago. It's totally changed my life. This is his last slide. This is the last thing of the day. And I've gone 24 minutes over, so I apologize. 
my future, your future, where you're going, it's not determined by your present circumstances. What you're, it ha, the circumstances have nothing to do with it. It's just like you're on a trip from LA to New York and you pass through some desert. It's hot, maybe your car breaks down, but it has nothing to do with where you're going. Your future is not determined by your present circumstances. Your future is determined, I believe, by God's plan and purpose for your life. Your perception of what's possible, this perception thing is very important, and the size of your dreams. You've got to have dreams. You've got to have clear perception. And what I love about understanding God's plan and purpose for my life is God doesn't fail at anything. I'm just floored that he's put gifts inside of me and has made something of me. And there's a scripture I look to it. He says he looks to and fro and he looks for the foolish things of the earth to confound the wise. Well, I grew up in the hood in the worst possible neighborhood raised by a drunk Never went to college one day in my life. We didn't even talk about college. Isn't it ironic that I've sat in boards of colleges and that I turn around? I mean, isn't that ironic? It's kind of, you know, because once you understand your calling, you can't fail. Now, you're going to have battles, there's no doubt. I've never, I used to pray, God, give me a year with no battles. Sorry. But what, there is a promise that he'll take those, bot, those battles. And if I'm willing to change my thinking, he'll transform me. And he'll take those things that look like they're going to destroy me. And he'll promote me and he'll do wonderful things from that. Now, I would rather have life on easy street. Let me tell you, I don't like the battles. But I don't mind if, if we have to have battles. And the question is, will I take the heat? to be the diamond that he wants me to be. Yes. Yes. So, you've got my card on your desk. If you need help, you want to sit and spend an hour, two hours, and whiteboard and trying to figure out these things that we've talked about today, let me know. I've already, I've already made the time. Since I planned, I actually planned an hour for 20-something people, so since there's only a few of us, I have extra time that I could spend. And, um, um, and, and it's, it's, it's free to you. It's not free to me because my time's, but somebody else has paid for your time. That's why I could do it. And so take advantage of it. You know, if I went and spent one hour with the turnaround, I'd charge around $5,000 to spend an, an hour and brainstorm with them. So it's expensive time, but somebody's paid the price for you. And if you don't mind, I'm going to go on a limb. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna pray a blessing over you guys. I don't know what's going on in your lives, but I believe that you're here for a reason. It's interesting that, you know, we had, it was funny because we had 36 people registered for today. There's a, there's a, there's a conversion that we know that's usually you know, tried and true. We know what percentage are gonna be here. And so today it was odd because it was, didn't happen. Like, okay, I'll go with the flow. You know, I always have a, okay, well then we're gonna put in these two other exercises that I can't do when I have more people. And so, let me just say a prayer, a blessing over you guys. Father, we just, I just pray for, I don't know what the situations are with the people that are here, but I do believe that you have a plan and purpose for each person here, even if they don't even know who you are. I believe that you have that. And I would just pray that whatever crisis is going on today, that you would put a peace in their life today that they would know that it's you. And, and only in a way that you could do that you would let them know that you're there and that you do have a plan and purpose. And it's to prosper and it's to be successful and that the desires that they have inside of them and the dreams that they have are from you. So that you would bless them in every way possible and give them this abundant life that's in their heart. And we thank you for all this. In Jesus' name, amen.